Hello kids, welcome back. I am teacher Amy and today is indeed a great day for another learning adventure. Be in your study area now and don't forget to prepare your module 6, your pen and your notebooks. I believe everybody is ready now. So let's get started. Our topic for today is about summarizing various text types based on elements. It is essential to learn how to break down a larger text into a short, brief, and point summary. It teaches you how to discern the essential ideas in a text, ignore irrelevant information, and integrate the central ideas in a meaningful way. When you are exposed to summarizing, you improved your memory of what is read. This module is done for you to understand how to summarize text types based on elements. After this video lesson, you're expected to identify the different elements based on the text read. Identify some strategies on how to summarize various text types based on elements. And summarize various text types based on elements. Let's review the elements of a literary text. I want you to answer the five questions in what I know. Directions. Choose the letter of the best answer. Number one. Where and when a story takes place is? The correct answer is letter B. Setting. Number two. A person, animal, or thing in a story is? The answer is letter C character and for number three it consists of the events that happen in the story the answer is letter a plot and number four it is the challenge or problem around which the plot is based the correct answer is letter c conflict and the last it is the idea belief or the moral lesson it is the central argument that the author is trying to make the reader understand. What's your answer? The correct answer is letter B, theme. Now, let's read the short selection below. Then, let's answer orally the information called for based on the story read. Okay, the title is The Farmer and the Snake. A farmer walked through his field one cold winter morning on the ground lay a snake stiff and frozen with a cold the farmer knew how deadly the snake could be and yet he picked it up and put it in his bosom to warm it back to life the snake soon revived and when it had enough strength beat the man who had been so kind to it the bite was deadly and the farmer felt that he must die. As he drew his last breath, he said to those standing around, Learn from my fate not to take pity on a scoundrel. Now let's answer the five questions about the story. Number one, or the first question, Who are the characters in the story? The characters in the story are the farmer and the snake. Number two, what is the setting of the story? The setting of the story is in the field one called winter. And number three, write down the plot of the story. So we're going to write the three important events that happen in the story. What's the first one? A farmer walked through his field one called winter morning. On the ground lay a snake, stiff and frozen with a cold. And a second event. The farmer knew how deadly the snake could be, and yet he picked it up and put it in his bosom to warm it back to life. And what's the third one? The snake soon revived, and when it had enough strength, beat the man who had been so kind to it. Okay, number four. What is the conflict in the story? Okay, the conflict is 
When the farmer knew how deadly the snake could be and yet he picked it up and put it in his bosom to warm it back to life. And number five, what's the theme of the story? Okay, it's in the last part. So not to take pity on a scoundrel. You already have learned about the elements of a literary text such as the character, setting, plot, conflict, and theme. Now, you must learn how to summarize or break down a larger text into a short, brief, and point summary. A summary is written in your own words. It contains only the ideas of the original text. Do not insert or include any of your own opinions, interpretations, deductions, or comments into a summary. Are you ready to answer the five questions in what's in? Okay, let's start. Directions. Write T if the statement is true and F if the statement is false. So we will be answering this orally. Number one. A literary text is a piece of writing that tells a story. The correct answer is T. True. Number two. The plot is the people animals, or objects who take part in the story? The correct answer is F. False. Number three. The setting is the sequence of events that happen in a story. The correct answer is F. False again. Number four. The conflict is the challenge or problem around which the plot is based. The answer is T. True. And the last, the theme is the central message or moral that the author is trying to send through the story she is. The answer is T. True. Very good. Let's have another story. Here is a fable entitled, The Hare and the Tortoise. Please read and understand it because you will be answering some questions about this story. What is the title? The Hare and the Tortoise A hare was making fun of the tortoise one day for being so slow. Do you ever get anywhere? He asked with a mocking laugh. Yes, replied the tortoise. And I get there sooner than you think. I'll run you a race and prove it. The hare was much amused of the idea of running a race with a tortoise, but for the fun of the thing, he agreed. So the fox, who had consented to act as judge, marked the distance and started the runners off. The hare was soon far out of sight, and to make the tortoise feel very deeply how ridiculously it was for him to try a race with a hare, he lay down beside the course to take a nap until the tortoise should catch up. The tortoise, meanwhile, kept going slowly but steadily, and, after a time, passed the place where the hare was sleeping. But the hare slept on very peacefully, and when at last he did wake up, the tortoise was near the goal. The hare now ran his swiftest, but he could not overtake the tortoise in time. The race is not always to the swift. Now let's answer the four questions. Number one, who are the characters in the story? The characters in the story are the hare, the tortoise, and the fox. Number two, where do you think is the setting of the story? Maybe the setting in the story is in the forest in which the hare and the tortoise are racing each other. Number three, when did the conflict arise? The conflict arise when the hare was making fun of the tortoise for being so slow. And number four, what is the theme of the story? The theme in this story is the race is not always to the swift or slow and steady wins the race. Now children, if I will let you retell the story, can you do it? Okay, now let's talk about 
what is a summary what is a summary a summary is a short description of the most important events in a story it tells what happens to summarize a fiction story readers need to think about the essential story elements such as the characters plot setting conflict and theme these story elements help answer the questions who what where when why and how remember opinion should not be included when summarizing what is summarizing summarizing means identifying the main idea and most essential facts then writing a brief overview that includes only those key ideas and details summarizing is a vital skill for you to learn but many find it challenging to pick out the essential facts without providing too much detail here are some of the different strategies on how to summarize various text types based on elements number one somebody wanted but so then somebody wanted but so then is an excellent summarizing strategy for stories each word represents a key question related to the story's essential elements somebody you're going to remember who is the main character in the story you read wanted what does the main character want but identify the problem that the main character encountered so how does the main character solve the problem and then tell how the story ends here is an example of this strategy in action let's use the story little red riding hood now for somebody you're going to write little red riding hood wanted she wanted to take cookies to her sick grandmother but she encountered a wolf pretending to be her grandmother so she ran away crying for help and then a woodsman heard her and saved her from the wolf now after answering the questions you can combine the answers to form a short paragraph and this will be your summary let's read little red riding hood wanted to take cookies to her sick grandmother but she encountered a wolf he got to her grandmother's house first and pretended to be the old woman he was going to eat little red riding hood but she realized what he was doing and ran away crying for help a woodsman heard the cross cries and saved her from the wolf now let's have the second strategy the five w's one h the five w's one h strategy relies on the six crucial questions the who what when where why and how these questions make it easy to identify the main character important details and main idea for example the first w the what what is the story about you're going to write next w what did they do then another w when did the action take place and next where did the story happen next w why did the main character do what she did or what he did and how the age how did the main character do what she did so let's try to use this technique with a familiar fable that we have just read the tortoise and the hare or the hare and the tortoise who the tortoise what he raised a quick boastful hare and won when one day or it was not clearly stated where maybe in the forest or an old country road why the tortoise was tired of hearing the hare boast about his speed how the tortoise keep up his slow but steady pace then use the answers to five w's and one eighth to write a summary in a complete sentence 
Okay, let's read. Tortoise got tired of listening to Hare boast about how fast he was. So he challenged Hare to a race. Even though he was lower than the Hare, Tortoise won by keeping up his low and steady pace when Hare stopped to take a nap. Another strategy, the first then finally. The first then finally technique helps students summarize events in chronological order. The three words represent the beginning, primary action, and the conclusion of a story, respectively. First, what happened first? It includes the main character and main event or action. Then, what key details took place during the event or action? Then finally, what were the results of the event or action? Here is another example. Are you familiar with the story Goldilocks and the Three Bears? Okay, let's read. First, Goldilocks entered the bear's home while they were gone. Then, she ate their food, sat in their chairs, and slept in their beds. Finally, she woke up to find the bears watching her, so she jumped up and ran away. You're just going to pick out the three important events and combine them to form a summary. Let's answer Activity 1, Directions. Identify the word being described in its sentence. Choose the word from the box given below. Write your answers directly on the space provided. Number 1. It is a short description of the most important events in a story. It tells what happens in a story. What's your answer? The correct answer is summary. Number 2. It means identifying the main idea and most important facts, then writing a brief overview that includes only those key ideas and details. What's your answer? The correct answer is summarizing. And number three, it is an excellent summarizing strategy for stories. Each word represents a key question related to the story's essential elements. The answer is Somebody wanted, but so then. For number four, it is a strategy that relies on six crucial questions. Who, what, when, where, why, and how. These questions make it easy to identify the main character, important details, and main idea. What's your answer? The correct answer is five W's, one H. Now the last. It is a technique that helps students summarize events in chronological order. The three words represent the beginning, main action, and conclusion of a story. The correct answer is first, then, finally. Now let's apply the three strategies that we have learned for the next stories. Activity 2. Directions. Read and understand the short selection below. Then summarize it using somebody wanted but so then strategy. Now let's read the story about the fox and the grapes. A fox one day spied a beautiful bunch of ripe grapes hanging from a vine trained along the branches of a tree. The grapes seemed ready to burst with juice, and the fox's mouth watered as he gazed longingly at them. The bunch hung from a high branch, and the fox had to jump for it. The first time he jumped, he missed it by a long way, so he walked off a short distance and took a running leap at it, only to fall short once more. Again and again he tried, but in vain. Now he sat down and looked at the grapes in disgust. What a fool I am, he said. Here I am wearing myself out to get a bunch of sour grapes that are not worth gaping for. And off he walked very, very scornfully. Now let's apply the first strategy. Now for somebody. Okay, the answer is the fox. Wanted. The fox wanted to eat the grapes. But the grapes hung from a high branch, so the fox had to jump for it. 
and then he sat down and looked at the grapes in disgust and said to himself, A bunch of sour grapes are not worth gaping for. For activity 3, you are going to use the 5 W's 1 each strategy to summarize this. So you are going to read the farmer and the snake. A farmer walked through his field one cold winter morning. On the ground lay a snake, stiff and frozen with a cold. The farmer knew how deadly the snake could be, and yet he picked it up and put it in his bosom to warm it back to life. The snake soon revived, and when it had enough strength, beat the man who had been so kind to it. The bite was deadly, and the farmer felt that he must die. As he drew his last breath, he said to those standing around, Learn from my fate, not to take pity on a scoundrel. For activity 4, you are going to use the third strategy that we will learn today. First, then, finally. So, read a short paragraph, then make a summary using first, then, finally. Do you understand now how to use the three strategies in summarizing various text types based on elements? Okay, very good. Now let's answer the next activity. Directions. Read the text and fill the blank spaces with the correct word. Choose the answer from the words inside the box. What's the answer for number one? Very good, it's summary. For number two, blank means identifying the main idea and most important facts, then writing a brief overview that includes only those key ideas and details. Okay, the correct answer is summarizing. Now, some of the different strategies on how to summarize various text types based on elements are okay, somebody wanted, but so then, then five W's, one H, and first, then finally. Now, let's read the last story. After reading this story, you're going to summarize this using any of the three strategies that we have learned today. The somebody wanted but so then, five W's and one H, or first, then, finally. Okay, what is the title? A wise old owl. There was an old owl who lived in an oak tree. Every day, he observed incidents that occurred around him. Yesterday, he watched as a young boy helped an old man carry a heavy basket. Today, he saw a young girl shouting at her mother. The more he saw, the less he spoke. As the days went on, he spoke less but heard more. The old all heard people talking and telling stories. He heard a woman saying an elephant jumped over a fence. He heard a man saying that he had never made a mistake. The old owl had seen and heard what happened to people. There were some who became better, some who became worse, but the old owl in the tree had become wiser each and every day. And finally, to check your understanding, I want you to answer the five questions in assessment directions. Read the questions and encircle the letter of the correct answer. Now that ends our lesson for today. Take care of yourselves. Goodbye.